Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Cafe Tele's standard operating procedure, our live broadcast. All right, Hashim and Paul, thanks for joining me. As you can see behind me, I'm still in a hotel room. Um, I've had a busy couple of months. Uh, first, I hope you all had a good holiday and you're enjoying holidays now. Next week, we've got New Year coming up and um, lots of let's see, Kwanzaa, I think was yesterday. Boxing Day in the UK was yesterday. So a lot of holidays coming up. Um, Lunar New Year, I think, is at the end of January. Maybe it's the first of February. Myself, though, uh, in early November, I took a new job uh, here in Denver, Colorado, USA. Uh, I did not live in Denver prior to that, so I had to move to Denver. Um, and the uh, place I'll be living permanently, uh, I can move into tomorrow, uh, excuse me, Tuesday. So it's my Sunday morning. I'm still in a uh, in kind of like a hotel courtyard by Marriott. Uh, it's been lovely, but uh, I'll be looking forward to getting into my permanent digs and getting out of a hotel. Okay. Um, so again, please uh, send me a chat message. Say hi. Um, let me know where you're at. Let's see, Paul. See, Paul, are you in Nigeria? Seems like I'd seen you before. Um, I don't recognize everybody. But uh, so today we're going to talk about busy hour reporting, and um, I'm going to share my screen again uh, to show you. Um, Sushil, how you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to share the whole screen because that's just a little easier. There we go. Kenya, Kenya, Paul. Sorry, I got confused. Um, So, yeah, can you see that? Okay, so this is um, this is a, a dashboard that that one of uh, uh, one of my students sent, and it's fairly typical. You can see it's two, four, six, eight, ten, more than ten different charts, and if you look at it closely, it's essentially just data that's been exported from an OSS. Sorry about that. I want to be able to see the chat messages. I see we got Allah from Iraq and uh, Rajneesh, Mr. Kumar, and Jim from New Jersey. I think Jim is a commodian. Um, essentially, what you've got here is charts of data exported from just your basic vendor OSS. And honestly, this is one of the best I've seen and I'm going to be critical of it anyway. Um, these are Excel charts. And if you look at each one, so let's look up here at the first one. This is uh, update location. Uh, scroll over here. Update location. And it just shows uh, by hour for a week or so. And so it's a visual representation of that underlying data. And that's that's great. That's helpful that it's, you know, it's visual. It's easier to process data visually, but really not a lot of value has been added because it's just the raw data expressed visually. And what our job as engineers is, is to to kind of filter away all the unnecessary data and simply reveal the information. So. I want to, you know, I want to be kind to the person who's put this together. This is so much better than most of these types of things that I see. At the same time, it could be improved simply by distilling down the data into the underlying valuable information. So let's go to, uh, I'm going to go to another spreadsheet here. So here's an example, and this is only an example. I'll have a third spreadsheet that I'm going to use. Uh, here is hour of the day. Here's the raw data over here on the left, right? By hour of the day, and then there's a label, it's called ISP, and then here's throughput value. Uh, that's probably uh, megabits per second. And this chart shows that, 
And now you can see a little more clearly when's your busy hour. It's even highlighted here in a different color. I'll show you how to do that. Um, Excel lets you do that. It's not difficult, but it's not directly out of the box. You have to think a little bit. But this is valuable because it shows you how the day is. This data is actually many days worth of data under the hood. And this is just the summarization of that saying after many days, here's the average hourly throughput in megabits per second across 24 hours in a day. And the actual busy hour, the busiest hours of the day are highlighted. Okay, so let's learn how to do that, shall we? Any questions before we get started? Okay, let's continue. So what I'm going to use is similarly throughput data. Now, if you're an RF engineer or any type of other uh, telecom engineer, you may have other data. You might have, uh, you know, uh, access attempts in a base station or uh, drop calls even, or maybe you've got uh, throughput on a link, um, all kinds of different things where busy hour is relevant. And this is just the raw data and uh, it's here's a timestamp column. This data is sampled every five minutes throughout the day. Uh, actually, this comes from uh, Cacti. Um, Cacti is a free open source reporting tool uh, and it reports, I uh, set it up to report every five minutes. And uh, there's several groups embedded in this data. So each group reports its throughput every five minutes. And then here's the value in megabits per second. So there's the basically the raw data. Um, and this data, well, I'm gonna show you a little later the data, but it goes down, it's every five minutes uh, for about eight or nine months. So you can see there's 310,000 rows of data. And I've got an extra month of data here that I'm gonna add later to illustrate a point. So let's come back here. Okay, and let's get to my notes so that I don't mislead you about anything. So yeah, I, I usually leave column A blank so I can be certain even without seeing the column numbers. Um, so we're gonna start to look at this data. I wanna look at it by hour and this is by, this is five minute data. So I need to be able to roll this up into, um, into hourly increments. <clears throat> and to do that, we use a synthetic field. And this is a technique we do on so many reports and dashboards, um, especially recurring record, reports and dashboards where maybe if it's a daily report, you do this every day. If it's a, a weekly, monthly, you do it over and over and over. So you wanna have something that allows you to add data in periodically, you know, new data every day or every week or every month. And the overall report or the dashboard updates instantly or almost instantly. That's the way you use Excel to automate your functions. So um, I'm going to make this is our I want to read this timestamp. You can see that it's 3 a.m. on May 523.14. So 23rd day of May uh, 2014. And it's 3 a.m. 10 minutes after 3 a.m. But all I want for a busy hour report, I only want the hour. I want three. And that's the hour function. This is Excel's built in hour function. I'm going to look at that timestamp. And you'll see I get three. So there's my hour. And I think, you know, um, I, well, I should say I typically um, color all my formula cells in a light purple. It tells me that it's a formula, so I don't accidentally type over it. Uh, data input is typically a light yellow color. Same thing. So I know where I can do data entry. And then I'm going to use a shortcut here. You see this little uh, square, this knuckle in the lower right-hand corner of the cell? That's the fill handle. And if you simply double click it, it will fill this formula down as long as there's data in an adjacent column. So you can see I've got data in the timestamp column all the way down to row 310,605. 310, so if I double click my fill handle, it should fill 310,605 rows. So I double clicked it. 
it's 300,000 rows, so it takes it a second. There you go. And if I go to the end there, well, it went even farther than that. It went 353,000 rows. Probably because I've changed the highlighting here. No matter. So now I have an hour field. Next, I want to add a pivot table. And the simplest thing to do is, you've all done this, right? Is is select your data and then insert your pivot table on a new worksheet. You can see right here where it says source data B1 to E353799, right? That's what I selected. Now, I think a lot of you do this, and it works. Let's go ahead and show that it works, but we're going to come back to this point. Here's the pivot table. Here's the field. So here's my hour over here. And let's say I want to look at the throughput by group. I can drop the group field onto the columns area. Yeah. And lastly, my throughput. There's my pivot table. Here's the hour. This is formatted to show nothing for a zero. I should fix that. Um, and here's my count. Now, that's not what I want, though, because the count is just how many entries for this hour or for each hour for each group Excel saw. That's not very helpful. What I want is each throughput, because each throughput is a sample of the throughput at that, in, at that period, I want the average of the throughput for all those samples. So my displayed value is going to be the average It's in the thousands, so I don't need decimals. So there you go. There's my average throughput by hour for each of those five groups. The groups are cash, DSL, EVO, ESP, and LTE. And I've got a blank here. So now that's what happens when you simply select all the data. If I look at the source. There's the data. That's all the data we highlighted, right? But that's the reason. Because we have these rows down here with no data, that's why we get this blank column. So there's a couple things we can fix there. Oh, another problem you have when you manually select the data, because this is five-minute samples, for five different groups, that's five in an hour, that's 12 per group, that's 60 samples per hour in a day, is that 8,000 samples? That's kind of a lot, right? Did I do that right? One day is about 8,000 samples. So if I'm gonna add a month's worth of data, you know, I'm gonna add a, a lot. <laughs> and I'll very quickly exceed it would be easy to exceed this data source because it's hard coded. So what we need is a way to display just, or sorry, what we need is a way to tell the pivot table, only use this data that we actually have. And if more data is added, include that. And there is a way to do that. I've showed you this before. This is what I call dynamic named ranges. Uh, this is the uh, uh, time of day, right? Time of day pivot, hour of the day pivot. Um, let's look at dynamic name ranges very quick. I've done this before. You can see some of those videos on YouTube. Uh, it's so useful, though. I'm going to show you again, and it's really quite easy. Here's my source data. Uh, I'm going to create a new... I think I'm going to create, there we go. I'm going to create a new named range. Oops, looks like I already did. I imported some, but I'm going to create source data. That just happens to be the name of the tab, right? And when you create a named range, a dynamic named range, it's always the offset function. 
and you pick the upper left hand corner of the data. And then it's the number of rows offset, it's zero. The number of columns offset is zero because I want to start right there at the same at this same point, B1. Now I want the number of rows of data. Well, again, I, I'm going to be adding data, so we're going to use a function. We're going to make this range dynamic, and the function is count A. Count A returns the number of cells in its argument that have some kind of data, right? Well, my argument, I'm just going to use timestamp, the whole column. So you can see the argument is this worksheet, column C, I can close it out. And right now, I'm just going to say, look, there's four columns here, B, C, D, E. So I could type in a four. We'll revisit that, and then I'm going to add that. Okay, so now if I click inside this range of cells, see it puts these... Uh, flashing lights around the edge of the area. And I could scroll all the way down and um, it would tell me it has selected only where column C has data in it. Okay. Again, there's YouTube videos that I've put up that explain, go into more detail of what we're doing here, but I'm just going to click okay. And then I'm going to come back and change my pivot table. change the data source to be source data, name of the named range. And now you see we no longer have a blank row, a blank column, because there is no blank rows of data in the source area, right? Now to prove that that works, well, let's, let's get there. So now I've got this pivot table that shows my 24 hours. Um, I said I was going to change that. Okay, now it's just a number. So here's the midnight hour at zero, and then there's the 11 p.m. 2300, right? So it's really, you could do this. I think you can just highlight this and insert a pivot table or a pivot chart, but I like to do it the old school way because it gives me a little more control. I'm going to just copy the hour. And then uh, I got to check my notes here. Did all that, inserted the pivot table, did that. Uh, scope of, okay, yeah. I'm not going to graph this. Well, I would graph this anyway. I, I'm going to come on, Russell, figure it out. Let's just do the grand table. Grand total. And then it's. This is another great trick where enter the equal sign, then click inside a pivot table and you get this really nice get pivot data function. And uh, now I can fill down and there's my throughput throughout the day. So straight away, I've already got something better than this chart had. This is just the raw data charted. This is now my average throughput for throughout the day. And I can pretty much instantly see. Uh, what is my busy hour? Now, this data is not very clean. It's not the, here's that original example I showed. This is the kind of time of day distribution you likely are accustomed to seeing where you have a low period during the small hours of the morning. And then sometime during the day, you get a peak. Maybe you get two peaks because of a morning and evening commute, right? So this chart is not as clean, um, but it still achieves what we want there. These are the hours that Excel saw fit to give me. And I don't need to chart that. I just want to chart the, this part. So um, 
what I want to do now is I want to illustrate why a named range is really helpful. Uh, we set up that dynamic named range on the source data. So what you can't really see here is what's the scope or the, the breadth of this data. So let's do a new one. Let's go back here. Uh, I want to still, I want to insert a new pivot table and we're going to look at all the data that's available to us. Let's get a summary that just shows the data that is available to us because you can't see that from this one. It's all rolled up into 24 hourly increments. Um, can't do that with a, so let's insert a new pivot table, same Same uh, named range is our source data for the pivot table. And we're going to put that on a new worksheet again. And there it is. But this time, let's look at not the hour. Let's look at the timestamp. Oh, that's not going to work great. Uh, we can group it again. Doesn't matter. And again, same basic thing, right? I'm going to leave it as count this time because I want to see, well, how much data is there? And I want to see it by months. I can do this, but it's again, it's a little bit hard to interpret, right? I got to expand everything to see what data is available. We can fix that. Let's go back to the source data. I want to see it by month because that's, you know, in the big scheme of things, I think that's the important way to look at this. So let's insert another column. And this is going to be, I'm going to call this month year. And all we're going to do is just show the timestamp as a month and a year. So it's, I have to use the date function. Uh, that is D. And for the day, I just want to have one month, all the data for one month, just roll that up so I can get that snapshot overview of what data is included. So I'm just going to use the first day of the month arbitrarily. And once again, I'm going to, I have to format it. I use the command or control one shortcut to format, to pull up the format dialog box. And uh, let's do that one just month and year. And then let's double click. And now here's a warning for us. Let's come back and look at this one. This is a pivot. I'm going to call this scope. It shows us all the data that's available to us. And if I refresh this, no difference. What happened? Well, remember when we set up our this source data range formula, define name source data, I hard coded that it had four columns in it. But I just added this month year column. So you can see the highlights. It doesn't include throughput. When I defined this dynamic named range, I use the count function, count A function, to count the number of rows. When you're first building your workbook, you really should use the count function on the number of columns because you'll add columns so that your pivot tables can give you the data you want. So let's revisit that, but we're going to take exactly the same approach. Count A, only this time, count the number of columns in row one. That's all it is. So now if I click there, did I do something wrong? Where's my highlights? Looks like I did something wrong. I overwrote. Oh, I misspelled it. I misspelled the count function. C-O-U-N-T-A. Oh, Got to be careful. So I'll, now if I click inside there, you can see the highlight. All five columns are highlighted. 
down to the last row of data. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, if I come back to this scope pivot and refresh it, uh, put my throughput back here and it's a count. One more thing I got to do. I don't want to see it clustered like this. I want to see those month year values. So that's uh, Excel is default by default. It's grouping those and I don't want to see that. So let's ungroup. Do I have to refresh that? Ah, timestamp. See, it's still doing what I told it to, but I don't want timestamp. I want month year. And it's grouped again. Does that by default. So click in it and then ungroup. There you go. So you can see now I've got in 2014, I've got May, June. It looks like July data is missing for 2014. Uh, also, September data is missing for 2014. But then I have, oh, and we're missing December data. So you can see that we're missing some of the important data here. Let me take a break here and go back to the comments. Any comments so far? I'm trying to step through this in a way that you can follow along. Um, and at the end of this, uh, I can send you this workbook if you want to have it. Ahmed, Ahmed well, welcome to, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> um, so the dynamic name ranges is cool because it only showed us actual data, right? Here's another benefit. I saved off my April data so that I could demonstrate this. I'm going to highlight that and I use, uh, that's row two, and then I'm just going to select the whole thing. So here's April, all the way down the last row on the screen there is April 30th, uh, 1155. So it's, you can see that's row 43,195. So I'm going to copy these 43,000 rows of data. And before I paste it, here's my scope. There is no April, right? There's no April of 15. But I'm going to come back to my source data, and I'm going to paste in that April data. Paste values. And I have to be a little bit careful because I added 43,000 rows of data, I better check. Okay, cool. There is, it just so happens, I think you can see how this happened, but sometimes to make your workbook future-proof, you should add rows of these synthetic columns so that when you know, extend these formulas down farther so that when you import or bring in new data, you don't have to also extend your synthetic fields. But now that I've added, I have April data here. If I come to my scope and just refresh the pivot table, refresh, it adds April automatically. There's the real benefit of using dynamic named ranges is for a recurring report when you bring in new data, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, anytime you bring in the latest data, anytime you update your workbook, all you do is bring in the data and refresh the pivot tables and it's done, finished. That's how you automate, that's how you automate adding data to your, that's how you automate your dashboards and your recurring reports. So uh, this is wrong because I, uh, why is this wrong? Oh, I did I not change the uh, pivot table? Nope, I did. So why is that wrong? Oh, because I changed throughput, yeah. This should be average. Hmm. 
There we go. So there's my chart once again. There's my chart once again. So let's check our notes here. Text is very small. Well, I can make it a little bigger. Sorry about that. Here's the source data. It's already at 130%. The scope pivot. Starting to get a little slow because there's you know 400,000 rows of data. So that's a little easier. That's at 130. That's at 130. I'm not going to be back here. That's bigger. Okay, so this should be a little bit easier to see, Paul. So I hope that helps. Um, so let's check our notes here. Uh, showed you why we use dynamic named ranges. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you was day of week. So this is time of day. I think the general term is seasonality. This is showing you this is showing you the distribution of throughput throughout the day by hour, right? You might be tempted to say, well, what if I wanted to look at it? Uh, I wanted to look at it um, by day of week. And you can do that. So we're going to insert another pivot, to, pivot table. Insert another pivot table. Again, it's the same sort. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's the same pivot table and the same source data. Excuse me, it's the same source data. And that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to put it on its own work, its own worksheet. That's good practice, by the way, is put every pivot table on its own separate sheet. Because when you get a complicated uh, workbook or a complicated dashboard, if you've got more than one thing going on on a given worksheet and you have this volume of data, it's just going to get so confusing. You're not going to be able to follow it. If you come back and want to, you know, enhance it, do something different in three months, six months, it'll just be too confusing for you. So I'm going to get on new worksheet. And uh, this is pivot. We'll call this day of week. Day of week. You can see with 400,000 rows of data, it is starting to get a little bit, a little bit slow. Uh, day of week. So how am I going to do that? Well, if I look at the source data, I don't have day of week there. I mean, oh, yes, it's implied in this column, right? But you could, you want to pull out that day of week, and that's actually pretty easy to do. Um, let's add a, another synthetic field, and this is a uh, day of week. Well, it's pretty, if I just, you know, I can just do this. This is what some of you are going to think is the way to do this. I've got that, but I, can I just format it as a day of the week? Oh, I did the wrong one. There. So now it says Friday. Unfortunately, that's not going to work, and I'll show you why. It's still, see, it's a formula. It's a link. So whatever is in column E, it's in column D. It's just formatted differently. It displays differently, but it's still the same underlying data. We'll go ahead and let that. So, and, and I, I know some of you, if you think are thinking about this, you're going to be tempted to try this. It, it's not going to work. Let me refresh the pivot table so I can see the day of week. And that's here. Not going to work. I have to click again and uh, ungroup.
because the underlying data is the same, every label, almost every data set is unique. So I'm going to get an entry for pretty much every row in the in my source data. So rather than linking directly to here, I really need to change that. It's still going to be a link, but I'm going to change it using the text function. Text function allows you to take a value and format it for on-screen display, but it does convert it from the original value to the formatted value. It, it, it converts a numeric value into a string is the best way to say that. And I wanted four Ds. So now you see how it's moved, it's shifted to the left side. This is on the right because it's still that underlying number. Now it's a string. It's no longer a number. It's been converted to a text string that says Friday. Let me fill that down. And again, <clears throat> to automatically fill that down, I'm just double clicking that little knuckle in the lower right hand corner. M Microsoft calls that the fill handle. And it'll fill that down as long as there's adjacent data. In, uh, there's data in the adjacent columns. I'm gonna save this just because I don't wanna lose all the work I've done. That'll take a moment. Save so fast. Okay, and then if I come back and look at my pivot DOW, I should be able to refresh it, and it should now simply be seven rows, Monday through Sunday. Yay! So let's finish. I can still group it and put my throughput out there. That's the average. Uh, I forgot to uh, format it. Okay, there you go. There's my throughput. This is the average throughput per day. So this is averaging the whole 24 hours, you know, all 720 samples into one value. Well, that's probably not what you want, right? That's probably not what you want. What you might want to do, though, is track your busy hour throughout the day excuse me, day, track the busy hour throughput by day of week or month or something, yeah? Okay, we've done that. Okay, I'm going to go off script here a little bit. And let me go back and check the chat. Okay, I've already made the text bigger for Paulus. Paulus... Uh, uh, at the end, of, when this is done, um, give me a day or two and I'll upload this recording to uh, YouTube. And um, I'll send out a link. Uh, let me give you this. If you want to get a copy of the underlying workbook or you want me to tell you where the, the recording is, um, here... Here's a URL or here's an address. So just click, oh, that should be a link. Gosh darn it. Try it again. Not everything works. Uh, usually when Abhiji and I give our free Cafe Tele webinars, Um, there's it's both of us, right? So, you know, while while I'm speaking, he's in the background doing stuff. And when he's speaking, I'm in the background doing stuff. And uh, it sure makes it a lot easier. And it's just one person, you got to do everything. And uh, well, as you can see, it doesn't always work out great. Um, okay, there's the URL. If you'll click that URL, um, uh, give me your email address, and I will send you uh, I'll send you the actual workbook that we're working on here today. I'll send you a link to the YouTube recording of this session. Uh, and uh, next time I go live, probably next week, next Sunday, um, I'll uh, send you an email in advance and say, hey, 
<clears throat> excuse me, we're about to go live. So I want to go off script here a little bit. There's one more thing we wanted to do uh, in that day of week, in that day of week, uh, pivot table I put together. In reality, if I was going to use that in my job and say, hey, here's the here's the average throughput per day of week, it's not very valuable to show the, in, the average for the entire day. Really, what would be interesting is the busy hour throughput, right? So what we need to do is, okay, we have, we've already seen on one of the pivot tables, I'll go back to it here, here in just a second. We've already seen what's the busy hour, right? We can identify those busy hours in the day. How do we show only the average throughput for those busy hours by day of week? So that's going to be a little more data, a little more work. We can still do it. And my interest for all this is to make it so that just like when I added that month of data, remember the 43,000 rows that was April of 2015, no matter what we do, what data we show or what visualizations we put together, I want to be able to update the workbook simply by refreshing the pivot tables. Remember, two-step process, bring in the new data, the new week or the new month, whatever that new data is, bring that into Excel, refresh the pivot tables, and it's done. I don't want to have to extend ranges. I don't want to have to change labels. I don't want to add dates. I want to two-step, bring in the new data, refresh the pivot tables, finish. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and do. We are going to try and find a way to show the busy hour and display that busy hour data by time of day. And, and by extension, you could do it for not just time of day, but for day of week or you know month, you know, a busy hour chart over many months. You probably want to show just the busy hours. You don't want to show the average throughput per day or the average drop calls for the whole day. You want to show what's the busy hour look like. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to share my screen again. Share my screen again here. That's uh, back to that. And that's a uh, whole screen. Yep. And let's go back to Excel. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to show you this one. So really, I, I want to show you this one because it's very clear here what the busy hours are which hours are busy hours. And in this example, what I did was calculated what's the maximum throughput in the whole day. And then I said, any, any period that exceeds some percentage of the busy hour, some, sorry, any period that exceeds some percentage of max, that's a busy hour. So I said arbitrarily 92%, right? Now this is formulaic and remember it's yellow colored so I can change it. If I change that to be, let's say 75%, look the whole, you know, from 10 a.m. until midnight is the busy hour. So if I can change, tweak that down, let's say 80%, OK, still, that's not very helpful if half the day is your busy hour. That's how I got to 92 percent is what's a reasonable amount of busy hour. Go to 88, see what happens. See, that's still not very good. This is pretty representative data. You know that uh, this distribution of low period during the, you know, the early morning hours and high period during you know evening time. That's pretty normal. Right. So we were at 92 and that's a pretty good look. So basically, I'm going to duplicate that. Gosh, I could do that here, couldn't I? Yeah, but our data is not very good. Okay, basically, I want to duplicate that. And the way we're going to duplicate that here in the source data is, uh, again, I'm going to add another field. And this is why we have those dynamic, we have that dynamic named range so that, again, this is the development period. We're creating this report or dashboard. <laughs> 
Uh, Paulus, follow the link, please. <laughs> I don't want to have to input your email manually. I'm too lazy for that. Um, I'm going to kill the question marks too. Uh, so uh, with the dynamic named ranges, while we're developing this report or dashboard, as we add these synthetic purple colored fields to the left, the source data for the pivot table automatically adjusts. And that's a good thing. So let's do that again. We're going to insert a new synthetic field. And this is going to be um, busy hour. Is this a busy hour or not? Uh, so where did I have that? I think here. Okay, this is called busy hour threshold 92%. And here's my maximum. So I'm not going to use that because this is this is other data. I've just imported this spreadsheet. So uh, back to this one. Right here. I'm going to say max throughput. I'm going to make that a named range. And it is So there's my maximum throughput by hour. We need to acknowledge that there might be individual increments in our source data that exceed that. But it's okay. We're only ever looking as granular as one hour. So this, this is my maximum hourly average throughput. Okay. So here in my source data, maybe I should come back to this two color chart and show you that. So here's the busy hour threshold. It is simply this threshold times the max. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do it out here just because it's uh, so threshold. So what I'm doing over here in the upper left, where the where the cursor is, I'm just defining these name ranges. This is a shorthand way to do it. Um, and this is a percentage. Where's my percentage? Right there. And I'll say, well, we already used 92%, yeah? So uh, let me stop and think. I don't think I took notes on this. Like I said, I was going off script. But I think this is important, so let's try and do this. Yeah, I'm off script. I don't have my notes for this. In. That's all right. We can still do it. So for each value, for each row in my data, uh, I want to, if... If the throughput, if the, here's the throughput, if that is greater than the max throughput, max throughput times the threshold, and that was the 92%, right? Busy hour threshold. If it's greater than that, just show a one, meaning it's busy hour. Otherwise, show a zero. So I've mistyped something. Did I? 
You, did I use the exact same name? Oh, I didn't define that. Uh, I put the busy R threshold. I assigned it to the wrong cell. So I'm going to have to manually check. Busy R threshold. See, I made it K3 and it should be L3. Sorry about that. And that should have fixed this. <laughs> so yeah I'm off script and I'm, I worry I'm leading you astray here this would be a normal way to do this though um, so back at me, I'm, I'm confused now. Uh, I got confused. That's the day of week, right? So now I have a new field. Let's refresh this. And here's my busy hour. So let's do this at a filter and now, if it's not busy hour, let's not do it. So this is only showing the average throughput for the busy, the hours that are busy hours. This still doesn't seem quite right to me, um, but I'm going to leave it for now. It's the technique I want to illustrate. So I simply came back to the source data and said, if this five minute sample exceeds the, the maximum average, this is a busy hour. That's what this column does, right? You can see a bunch of zeros there where it doesn't exceed that average. So when I look at my pivot, where's my pivot? It's, uh, is it this one? Right. So here's my day of week. Here's the th average throughput during the busy hour by day of week. Uh, and we can chart that. Let me set this up as fast as I can. So here's the, what I'm doing now is I'm just tweaking this get pivot table function, uh, this get pivot data so that it fills out this table. I don't like, I don't like, <laughs> you'll think me old school. I don't like pivot, pivot charts. I think they don't have good, uh, not as much control as I want. So the day of week here, it's not Friday. It's this cell. It's a reference. And the ISP, uh, I need to make that row. So I shortcut uh, function F4, and it makes it, adds those dollar signs. And I want uh, column I to be fixed, but the row can vary. And this, where it says ISP, it's actually up here, but again, I want the row to be fixed. So function F4, and now it's dollar sign four. So it will always use rows four as the input. And that means I can do this. And uh, I should have done the formatting first. So now if I, if I chart that, insert, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do one more here. I don't really need all that stuff. It's fun to show, but
I'm cheating here. You guys, you're going to be mad at me and I don't blame you. So let's do this. Insert a chart. And um, so now it's just the average busy hour throughput for the whole network by by day. Make sense? I kind of went through that last part fast. Like I said, I was off script, so I didn't have a chance to prepare my messaging there. I do apologize about that. Let me, uh, I'm going to come back to the chat, see what you guys think of that. How do we do? Did I lose everybody? Still shows there's nine of you there. What do you think? Any questions? Paulus? Any questions? Uh, these are the kinds of things you do when you prepare a, a, uh, a report or a dashboard. Now, this is a nice one, right? That's nice, but it doesn't really show the busy hour. I mean, you have to, with your eyes, you have to stop and figure out, okay, it looks like there's a 6 or 7 or 8 a.m. busy hour, right? Well, what are the values there? So this kind of chart or this kind of chart kind of does that for us. I think this is especially valuable, but really we're out of time. It's, it's 11. We're an hour into this. Um, and I it showed you how to do this kind of, you know, but that's, I don't want to take too much of your time. So there's the, I'll show you one more thing because it's fast. When you're making up charts like this, often the name of the chart isn't very helpful, but you can create chart names. And again, we're thinking about automation, right? So this might be average EHT put by day. Excel allows you to build your own strings. It's not as fast as I thought. Max is source data. That's that. Okay. So there I just created a string. I'll make that a little bit bigger. Average busy hour throughput by day, and it's today's date. Sorry. The maximum day in the data. I stole the data. I stole this date directly from the data. And I can click on that and then come up here, hit an equal sign, and then link to my formula for the title. And there's my chart. What do you think? Uh, like I said, uh, if you'll follow this link here, Where's all my data? Um, I'll send you uh, this workbook and uh, let you know when we're going to go live again. Also, also a link to the uh, YouTube video.
Here's the link. Click that link, and um, I'll send you the workbook and the YouTube video. Um, the YouTube video will be up probably maybe later today or tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure I'll get to it today. Uh, I have to move. Remember, I'm moving into my permanent place um, Tuesday, so I'm kind of <laughs> I'm cleaning up this mess. Sorry about that. Um, also want to let you know, uh, please follow the link, Hashim. Um, I'm much too lazy to go back and scrape all your emails out of this, your email addresses out of this. Um, what else I'm going to send? Oh, want you to know that there is a, uh, we've got a webinar coming up on January 16th. It's a millimeter wave, 5G millimeter wave. It's with uh, one of our guest experts. Um, where am I at? Right here. Gosh, I thought I had a link to that. Right there. Here you go. Um, join us for this on the 16th of January. Uh, there's a link to the free webinar on the 16th of January. That's a Saturday. I think it's uh, also at 5 p.m. on Saturday, January 16th. Uh, Christoph is uh, is a uh, uh, a PhD in uh, RF engineering, um, and he's gonna he gonna. One of the great things about a PhD is they've got such deep knowledge, they can make really complicated things simpler and accessible for guys like you and me. So uh, join us on the 16th. And um, what else? Let me go back to my notes. You can follow Cafe Tele. Here's Cafe Tele on LinkedIn. Uh, my partner posts lots of stuff for uh, telecom engineers there. That's really where we do most of our work, uh, announcements and um, uh, upcoming events. So uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, oh, my Facebook group. We just, my Facebook group for telecom, uh, for RF engineers uh, and planners, uh, my Facebook group just exceeded 30,000 members. So join us. Um, maybe that's where you saw the invite for this session. Um, but that's about it. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, watch for next week. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Um, if you uh, have a suggestion for something that you'd like me to cover on um, the work you're doing, um, specifically Excel and reporting, love to do that. Send me an email. Um, also, if you have a workbook you've been struggling with to try and turn it into a dashboard or report, or you've got a dashboard or report and you want some help with it, email it to me and uh, we can talk live and um, I'll make some changes and, and help you out with it. Uh, maybe we'll make a video out of that. So what you're going through, we can use that to teach other people also so that they can also get better. Farouzan, thanks so much. You guys have a great day. Nice weekend and uh, happy new year coming up this week. Hope, uh, hope 2021 is better for you and, and for everyone. Thanks so much.